what I saw happening in the 90s, like when I was working with Tony Conrad, one of the smart things he did was to say, okay, I'll play in a rock club. I'll do this in a rock club. You know, I don't need to do it at, at concert hall, you know, or whatever. And what happened there in the mid nineties with a lot of, of that kind of music and uh, experimentalists like him or Phil Niblock or, 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 or others deciding like, I don't have, I can do this stuff outside of this world. I think there's people out there who will be interested in this, who are not of this world. And you had a lot of people successfully moving out of that world and finding a new audience um, outside of what you would call, you know, the new music world. Uh, and I think that's happening again, actually to a degree. I think you have people who are not coming from the world of new music who really, I mean, you see it a lot. I mean, you see it, I mean, you see it with the resurgence of Julius Eastman's work that came complete. Well, I, I, I don't want to say uh, Mary Jane Leach, of course, did a lot of, of, of work, but it basically he came back outside of the world of new music. It, it took it took people outside of that world to introduce his work again to people. And I, I mean, I think there's a lot of composers now who actually have more fans outside of the world of new music than inside more so than i think they know like someone like uh uh georg friedrich haas or Sherino or uh i mean these guys have lots of fans you know outside of the world of new music mm -hmm. but uh it's probably more of a private thing now more than a uh you know than a and you know, people just get get into it on their own and don't necessarily uh go out there and and, and uh, write about it or, or or you know i mean of course like you know roland kane who i'm the work i'm involved with a lot you know i mean it's still to this day you know the, the bulk of his fans are people outside of the world of new music so i've seen that happening in the last 10 years and i think that's a good thing i think i think it's a, a positive development i, I could, and it fills me with optimism for the future actually because the thing is that the new music world is is like this it's it's small and it's narrow and part of the reason for that is not necessarily because the people are narrow on the contrary but because the the the, the structures that make that world possible are extremely the situation powerful. the situation it's like it's like if you if you actually look at it from the outside it's it's absurd it's like you would you would you know a piece might cost 20,000 euros to commission and then you spend 6 months to a year writing it and then there's 50 people in the audience and it's like yeah. at a certain at a certain point that that arithmetic just doesn't really you know it's not it's not indefinitely sustainable so there so yeah. that sort of leads oh, to a situation sorry I mean, I mean, the amount of people that you really have to depend on to make it happen yeah it's which is just because of my character why i never really went down that road just because of basically me making someone else do something for me is like kind of a game what's the word for a game breaker for me it's just the irish guilt will not let me do it <laughs> i just that's why that's why i've almost done everything by myself that's probably why i've made more tape music electronic music more than anything else because i don't feel guilty about making myself work but yes that world is so difficult and this and this this ties into it but it's it's a funny story uh someone i know uh in japan uh I was playing them a lot of no-no and uh, they were starting to get into the music, but they're like, why do they always have the soprano? <laughs> you know, why is it always soprano? I was like, because they paid for the piece. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's, I mean, there's that element too. That's really kind of lost on a lot of people. Like a lot of, you know, a lot of works happening. You know, it's like, Oh, why is it there? It's like, the, these are the people funding the pieces and that's why you get a lot of this or you get a lot of that right you know there's the element as well but that's kind of hidden to to most people the, the this this whole like economic political like you know like kind of like you know twister game you got to play to get anything done in that world yeah yeah well it's like trying to jog through a, a pool of molasses it's just it's it's you're constantly being uh being thwarted by by these sorts of uh, extra musical considerations. And I suppose you could argue that to a degree, that's just life, right? Because you always have to deal with 
with obstacles and and problems but yes but it's it's magnified in a way that's uh you know it it just caught it's a lot more time and a lot more money yeah you know would you would you relate that at all to the to being in a band is it similar to that in a sense where in terms of constraints on your on your creative freedom and and what you're able to do well when i've been in bands i don't i kind of go in a different mode i i like i have a job in the band and what i can offer to them in my maybe different uh perspective but I don't think I have the right to uh, impose what I think on top of it. It's like it's. It, I really kind of do go into another way of think. Not I don't go into another way of think. I just think I have. I don't have the right to do this, and I don't have the right to do this in this situation. But I can learn something from this, and I can hopefully learn something that I can use myself and get experience, and hopefully my slightly different way of looking at things will help them as well but i don't yeah i guess i really do sort of turn off like the a certain part of me when i when i've done that mm-hmm. um i do sort of, i do sort of go into the uh i mean it's in i mean in some cases a little weird because like some of the situations when i was banned i was like the band in the band and also like basically their producer because you know i was the one recording i was the one who was going to mix i was you know this sort of they're sort of wanting me to so i i'm sort of an odd case for that for that question in a way because uh i've never really been in a band in a normal situation like most people have been and usually it's been like I was recording them first and then they sort of like, Oh, will you, will you stay for a while? <laughs> right. I mean, I haven't been in a band in a normal sense. I mean, outside of like playing for my friends, if they're doing a show or something, I haven't been in a band in a normal sense, like probably like since high school, really. Mm-hmm. And I, and I really wasn't like a big, I mean, then it was like jazz bands. I was more into playing in jazz bands than like rock and roll bands. In my case, I'm just opting out of that whole thing because it doesn't it doesn't make sense creatively, really. Uh, you know, it's 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 too it's too constraining. And the thing is, there's there's a much larger world outside of the new music world, and and there's a surprisingly broad range of listeners also who are interested in all kinds of things uh, once you step outside of that framework. And so that's been that's been quite interesting for me to observe. And I'm seeing a lot of younger composers and musicians arise who. Uh, are making work that is impossible to categorize and doesn't really slot into any particular, um, what would you say, any particular context or or mode of distribution or anything like that. And uh, and to to a degree, I think what you're doing now also with your with your Bandcamp page it, it certainly follows falls under that rubric because it's like you're responsible for for everything, the entire chain of production from the conception to the realization to the distribution and the you know, it's like the te- the technology now exists for for someone like yourself to 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 do that, and and for that to be sustainable, and that's amazing. It, it I mean, it is what you're saying, but it also is in a way in opposition to the old way. I mean, one of the things that was really appealing to me about Bandcamp when it started was this idea that I can make something, put it up there, it it. You know, the 50 people who are interested will get it, but I don't have to engage in the whole structure of like the new blah, the new something by blah, blah, you know, this, this whole like structure that exists uh, that on, on, on every level up to that point on, on in, of the, you know, pr- propagation of, of, of music or whatever. The idea that you could just very quietly make your stuff, put it up there. It's there for whoever wants it, and I can walk away and be and start the next thing, <laughs> you know. Because oh, this the idea of making something and then it's done, and you want it out of your life, but it's got to stay in your life for the next year, <laughs> right? Being able to like like just shed that is fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I can completely understand that. Yeah, I mean, one of the things that maybe you can relate to this that that I found extremely 
extremely difficult uh, is having to talk about the work afterwards. It's like, well, it's done. <laughs> there was nothing to say. It's it's finished. I made it, you know. And then the the artist. The other thing is like the the artist is the is the the worst positioned person to to describe what it is they've made because they typically don't even know. I mean, I don't mind the idea of someone wanting to know what the work is about, but it has to be a conversation from the get go. You're, I mean, you're you're basically asking me or someone to make an entire new work, which is the lecture about another work. You know? mm. <laughs> that's that, that's another work in itself. It, I mean, if if people really want to understand that, they have to put in work as well. I think, uh, you know, about like if well, have some questions, have some have some some like jumping off points so that we can start this conversation. Mm -hmm. But like, yeah, put in the position, explain your work. It's like, that's, that's, a, that, that's, that's, a, that's a no starter from the beginning. Yeah. It's such a horrible position to be in. That That's also something that was quite, quite characteristic of the new, new music world in the, in the fifties and sixties with, with things like the Haya, which was this, you know, maybe, you know, this magazine it was published, uh, uh, you know, edited by Stockhausen that had uh, often quite, technical and, and complex articles about what composers were up to at the time. And so the composers would not only produce their work, but then they would have to go and write, you know, a whole dissertation about, about, about what it is they were doing and, and explain it to other people. And and in, in some cases, they were writing entire books about their processes and their techniques. I was, I was thinking in some cases, they probably enjoyed it. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure they did. Some, some of those guys really enjoyed that. <laughs> I'm sure I'm sure they did. Yeah. But that, that seems to have largely vanished, though. I don't see a lot of uh, younger musicians engaging in that kind of critical auto reflection or anything like that. Um, maybe partly because it's not clear who would actually read it. 